Thank you guys for attending the uh, SecureNet Works with NX webinar. We've got Chris uh, and Luke Lee here from SecureNet, and Chris is going to be driving the presentation, and Luke is going to be helping them out. And uh, we're not going to do video today because Chris doesn't have a webcam on his computer. <laughs> right. I need to buy one. Right. Yeah. You guys right. can pay better attention to the actual. Uh, webinar content itself which is pretty good so let's uh let's get into it chris you want to introduce yourself and and secure it and luke and i'll, I'll hand it over to you guys all right oh, oh. One, one, oh, sorry one quick thing i forgot uh there's chat and there's questions um so if you guys have any questions um or you can throw them either in chat or in the question section and i'll be reviewing them throughout the presentation and i might rudely interrupt Chris and ask him a question or Luke and ask him a question or I might wait until the end depending on what the question content is. So all right. feel free to I throw guess. all your questions in. All right, Chris, back to you. All right. Thanks everyone. Um you know I could just for a moment want to speak for ITX and security net. I want to say how much of a privilege this opportunity to have a joint webinar with you know NX or NX power products. Um, I can thank all of you enough uh especially tony and kat for arranging this great event um by the way my name is chris like tony introduced and i've been with the company quite some time and in this session we will focus how our ai solution works with the nx or nx power products uh, that includes wave uh, techwin products and dwe and so on uh, without further ado, we'll continue with a short company introduction. A, um, I may be using a term ITX and security net interchangeably. That's because ITX is our mother company. Uh, it is headquartered in Korea, South Korea. And security net is our uh, brand division. Um, we've been, okay, we were founded in 1998. Um, it, uh, it was actually a small firm. Today's standard would we'll probably call it a startup company. Back in the days, we'd probably say a uh, venture. But it was actually founded by a couple of smart engineers from um, Korea version of MIT. So we are the one of the first company actually producing embedded solutions, embedded DVR solutions. Uh, so whatever you see on the market now or in the past, the DVR, the term, and the technology actually came from us. So we are basically a hidden player in the market for quite some time. And the, uh, uh, now we have a presence in you know, Asia Pacific and EU, and also US market as well. So ever since 1998, the company grew a lot, and now we, are, we became a global uh, company. Um, like I said, the security net name is a brand division of ITX. And, you know, ITX has been focusing on producing OEM products for bigger name companies. You know, I'm not going to say who, but when you hear the names, you probably recognize the names. So we've been actually doing a lot of OEM works. Uh, but now the strength of our AI solution, we decided to pursue our dream of you know, establishing a brand name in the States, EU, and Asia Pacific. All right, so uh, we have headquarters in South Korea, and we have a factory in China, and we have an EU branch in Belgium to cover all the EU territories. And US branch, like Tony said, we are in New Jersey. They are part of the country, and we are actually growing pretty well. All right. So you may ask, um, why is security net AI when everyone else in the industry is saying that their AI is the best? All right, that's because the technology implemented in our products are actually owned by us. In other words, we actually made it. So hence, we can also customize to meet the, uh, the market needs. If our customer needs 
certain products and certain type of rules and engines, we can actually create that because everything's, you know, everything that's you know, implemented in our product is ours. And the um, uh, since it's a flexible, we can also provide solutions to different segments of the marketplaces. Let's say from like small retail stores, big box stores, like, you know, such as, you know, big supermarkets. I'm gonna talk about this later on and also the supermarkets and also the government funded projects and so on. And, and also all of our AI device, uh, AI solution devices are basically an edgy uh, uh, based and also standalone. So what it means is that it's actually good for far computing basically. So our all of our products are on edge based. So it, it also provides a lower cost of ownership because it is on edge. You don't have to maintain a server. You don't have to upgrade the OS. You don't have to throw in a very, now it's like very getting very expensive video cards or anything at all. It's basically all in one box. And also um, our AI box, this is our main topic today. Uh, we're gonna talk mostly about our AI box and AI box has a REST API directly built in. So if our customer wants to you know, integrate our AI solutions to their access controls or audio video systems, other VMSs, so forth, you can just download REST API directly from our device and start implementing it you know, along the way. But lastly but not least, uh, we have a completed uh, rich integration with the NX Windows and NX uh, powered by NX products. So, all right, um, everybody knows the motion. Uh, motion was a wonderful thing long time ago. You know, when it first came out, it was a wonderful thing. But everybody knows now it's very crude technology and also with a lot of limitations. Now along the way, there's a thing called the video analytics, uh, it's called the VA. And the um, it was another amazing thing, or it could be an amazing thing, but as everybody know, it, um, it has to be calibrated and has to be in the same formula. And it has to be on the right spot at the right timing with the right, you know, the, the height and the length to work, uh, uh, work accurately so the detection rate that we've seen so far uh is about 60 percent and the um most of the times unless it's properly configured and calibrated it just doesn't work and we know about this because in the past 10 years we've been working with a lot of va solutions too now time passed and there's a thing called artificial intelligence now this is where our technology shines um AI is really just a simple thing. Uh, it, it, it works almost same as for our perspective, since our, we produce video products, we look at it as an eye. We consider our cameras and other devices in our human eyes. So if you can see it, our camera can see it, our device can see it uh, with that video, the feed and the data, uh, we can, you know, um, process and transmit metadata to other devices to process it. All right. We have a lot of lineups as far as the AI is considered. Um, today, we're going to talk about the AI box, which is on top here. And we have AI built-in cameras too. We're gonna talk about this later on too. And we have AI built-in NDRs as well. And along with, you know, the large rack mountable uh, servers as well. So, but AI gives the most powerful uh, performance along the way. And people may want to ask uh, how good the performance is as far as the AI box goes. and it's actually equivalent to NVIDIA you know, GTX 1080 or an AMD 2080, along with Intel process built-in. So um, you can't really tell from a, the picture, but it is actually pretty small size. It's the size of smaller than iPad, actually, uh, smaller than iPad. And with that small you know, standalone box, it gives a lot of good performance. So. Um, 
all AI is done in the box, and the box you will transmit metadata to according to the rules, uh, whichever detection engine is enabled. So when the performance is compared, it is equivalent to PC server, you know, with a you know, high-end video card. And uh, because of lack of, or um, because we don't require to use any kind of add-on devices or OSs or the RAMs and hard drive to worry about, uh, this is where the AI strong point shines. And, and also, because it is a standalone, you just, only thing you gotta worry about is plug in the data part, so it'll transmit the data. And only thing you need to worry about is just keep providing the power, like electricity. Otherwise, it'll just you know keep working. And also, since it is embedded device, uh, there's no worrying about you know uh, paying for license for iOS or Google or Microsoft. Hey Chris, is this uh, is this mm -hmm. Nvidia is this Nvidia based or is it like no? A this is not Nvidia based. This is actually I, this is just a direct comparison. Basically, it has you know identical or higher performance compared to Server Video 1080 or AMD 2080. I'm I'm sorry. The, 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 um, the, the, the Nvidia 2080. Mm -hmm. So there's no there's no uh, there's no NVIDIA GPU in this at all, right? No, there's no NVIDIA GPU at all. Actually, there's an SOC built in, and SOC has a graphic, uh, you know, the portion built into it. That's uh -huh. how it works, right? We optimize yeah. it so well, so it doesn't require any sort of add-on devices. The so SOC what you see is what you get. I'm sorry? Is the, the SOC one? proprietary? Yes, it is. Okay, so it's secure net technology. Right, basically okay. that's what it is. Okay, gotcha. Okay. And you know, some of we, some of you may ask, how do you verify how work it works, and how can you guarantee the performance that we are claiming of over ninety five percent of accuracy? And there's a agency in Korea called the Kisa. It's a Korea Internet Security Agency, and the um, it's basically similar agency as a CISA. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. It's a basically U.S. Uh, cyber security infrastructure, uh, what is that, security agency? Uh, the CISA is a government agency, right? It's a Korean version of CISA is a KISA. So we actually submit, uh, if in order for us to do any kind of government funded projects, uh, everybody or all products must go through the KISA in Korea to sell to the you know, government agencies. And you need to be certified, and they actually do very intensive testing, right? And I'm gonna show you how it was done and what it was done on uh, the next slide. But anyway, um, just like Homeland Security plays huge role in our security system, I mean, security, cybersecurity world, the same thing is happening in Korea. Uh, Korea, if you look at the numbers, has about 96% of the population uses the internet. Um, maybe it doesn't feel like a lot, but comparison to South Korea, the population, the internet population, um, US is about like 88%. So 88% of population uses the internet. And compared to that, Japan's about 91%. So we can say everyone basically uses some sort of internet services in Korea. Uh, so Korea takes cybersecurity very seriously. And the, um, the KISA evaluates each submitted products or items uh, for their standards and testing protocols. Um, so, let, you know, like I say, if you want to sell to government-funded projects or government agencies, you must meet their standards. Um, you know, at the test, our AI box scored above and around 95% at, at all testings. So, um, if you look at the final score, the average was 95.5%. And they do testing of this. All right. Um, they throw about 150 uh, video clips, random video clips. They have a database of about, I heard, 3,500 clips. And they throw. Uh, uh, video clips to our device, and they that's how they calculate their accuracy. So um, they throw, for example, you know, um, the first one loitering, and they 
um, they show the video clips to our devices about 150 times and also intrusion to 150 times you know uh, depending on uh, a timing also there's a sun rising scenario 9 a.m scenario 12 p.m scenario and sunset and night scenarios too so they throw all those videos to test it our devices and the accuracy is about 95.5 percent that's an average we got and the test resolution is 720 and each video clips is running about three to ten minutes so uh i didn't see it personally but I believe our headquarter guys, and they said it's 95.5%. I believe that number. Um, and also, the uh, customization ready. And what you see in this slide is actually doable. And the human mid, human far, human uh, uh, the fast is basically distance and speed, velocity of uh, how fast uh, the runner is. And the vehicle mid, vehicle far, is a distance also but this is pretty common uh in camera these days or ai device these days so it's, it's you know nothing special uh but i don't know if you guys actually know but it's very hard to measure a distance correctly with a rounded picture of a fish eyes we have a algorithm for that so our ai works pretty well with our fish eye cameras too and we can also do something like for construction site helmet mounted or goggle mounted people or if a person or a group of people are missing helmets or some sort of safety gears we can also you know alert or uh send out proper notification to people so can take actions and we can also do fire detections and glass and you know, sunglasses and masks and you can also detect different objects. Uh, different objects are also common thing these days, you know, the vehicles and human animals possibly, but we can also do that too. Mm -hmm. And also uh, in conjunction with a thermal cameras, for example, we can also do a thermal image uh, uh, and analysis too. And this is a detector level, and we also offer recognizer. So it actually recognize, you know, the faces, it's kind of arguable these days good privacy law and everything but we can also, you know we can still do it so we have a face recognition built in or it can be activated by a license so we can do that and also active privacy um not so common in the states actually but i think it should be but some of like in asian countries like privacy is a huge thing so whenever let's say big market stores or uh, they want to count the number of people going in and out but they don't want to store actual image of a uh, person going in and out you know maybe some people are having an affair or whatever the, the case may be so they actually uh, uh, put a privacy mask on each person that walks in but they can also but they can still do people counting and, or uh, in-store traffic counting so you can do that and there's a license plate recognizer too so we have an LPR module built in, and I'm gonna show a couple of uh, example videos later on. But LPR works pretty well, and also the gender, uh, also sensitive uh, a subject these days. You know, you can't really say gender anymore, but in some cases and some projects, gender maybe play a, a huge role. So we also do gender recognizer too and object distances um it's not the same as detector so it actually measures a distance between an object point uh, object a to object b and also a um, this is another popular feature for retail or big stores the fallen behaviors so whenever somebody falls you know you can uh recognize the action or the behavior and so chris Mm -hmm. these are all uh inference engines you guys have built like a uh, trained neural networks is that right yes this is already so, um it's so depending these... on whether you want to activate the license or not but this is all built in and ready to go so would it be fair to say the detectors are less intensive um in terms of compute and the recognizers are more intensive in terms of compute yes sir yes sir yes so the so, detectors um, mm -hmm. My, my question one, one one further question is like do you chain them together to to accomplish certain things like for example um the fisheye plus 
uh, face exactly. ready. Yep, right? that's the thing that I was about to tell That's why you right. can do kind of a, a unique things. It's because right. you've got kind of underlying neural networks, and then you combine them with the recognition uh, neural networks, and you can do kind of various different uh, applications, I guess. Yep. Precisely. Yeah. yeah. The so, other question is: mm -hmm. uh, Are these detectors are, are they the ones that are available like in camera? Um, uh, yeah, there are cameras ready with the uh, detectors too. Yes, I'm gonna show that later too. Okay. Cool. All right. All right. So yes, um, like Tony said, you can mix and match basically. Let's say you wanna do the fishy eye, but you wanna do like gender a, a recognizer. So there's detector and recognizer. You can mix and match basically, depending on your scenarios or, or projects. Or you can do, let's say, helmet AR detector along with object distances. So you can basically mix and match. So in other words, detector is low level, like Tony said, and recognizer higher than, uh, uh, it also requires more performance too. So how we sell our AI box is there's a, a threshold of, let's say, 10,000 uh, threshold. So each feature takes certain points. So let's say you are using a object uh, detector, then it's taking 20 out of the 10,000, and you want to mix it with the active privacy with those uh, detectors, then it's taking additional 100 points. So you basically do a calculation how much you can handle. So that's how it works. All right. Um, this is a video. Uh, this is. Is it playing? All right, this is playing now. All right, let me play a quick video file here. Uh, did it stop? Okay. All right, you, you'll notice camera two and three, it is actually snowing. So AI works regardless of the, um, in the weather. And also if you look at camera four, uh, the angle is pretty wide. So th the field of view is pretty wide. And my guesstimation tells me between the um, upper right corner and the lower left corner is about 70 to 80 meters. So as like I said before, as long as you can see it and as long as you can provide a video of it, uh, our AI solution can do the analysis without any problems. So this is actually video uh, taken from other video devices. We actually trained our AI box you know, with those uh, uh, the video files. So, I mean, like I said, this is not possible with the, you know, conventional uh, VA. Okay. Oop, okay. All right, uh, let me play other video to show. Uh, if you look at camera one, um, if you look at those moms with the strollers, right? That's, that's actually four moms with the four strollers, you know, almost walking towards that, uh, the line, uh, the four lines simultaneously. Um, our AI can actually detect every single one of it. But moms and strollers are separated too. So it only detects moms as a human. And if you train the strollers, you could probably detect as uh, uh, strollers too. And if you look at a channel two, camera number two, it is actually a, versus a very, very wide field of view. And it could also be a good solution for traffic flow projects or a, a traffic control projects. And camera number three, I'm not too sure if he is locked out or breaking in, but he's definitely not holding a uh, door key. Um, so you can have an example of uh, intrusion a, a scenarios too. Uh, number four is actually after sunset at dark. Um, it's in color. And the, uh, uh, you, it, I mean, it's still in color, but you can say it's after sunset. And the, uh, we have a camera that can do a color view at nighttime. So in conjunction with the camera and AI, AI solution, it can probably work 24 seven in color too. And this will give probably a powerful solution for many different scenarios too. And this is my favorite feature, LPR. All right, I play a video too. All right, conventional LPRs, 
everybody knows you only have one camera for one license plate, one lane, so to speak. But if you look at channel one, this is a multiple cars approaching toward the one camera, but it's actually divided by the zones. So with a single camera, you can detect multiple LPRs at the same time. And um, usually cameras looking at one lane with a conventional LPR, but if you noticed, um, uh, our LPR is working with the zone boxes not per lane uh, or preset configurations. One of the most common questions that we get out of this demonstration is uh, how much can we read the license plate out of video? Uh, bottom line is this is artificial intelligence. This is basically simulated human uh, decision and, and view. So if we can see it from the video, then the AI can read and save those data. Right. And also, it's such a good thing that Lung mentioned. If you look at the angles, it's pretty crooked too, actually. It's not a straight line. Um, so it's it's not depending on the line or angle or how it's configured. Like Luke said, if you can see it, you can get the data out of it. So uh, we have you know multiple LPR processing power, and EU LPR is ready, and UK is ready. And the Asia, Korea, or something like Japan is all ready to go. It says USA LPR support is ready, but it's not. Honestly, with you. you know, we need to get data first. Uh, we are working on that right now. So, um, you know, everybody knows like AI is not programmed; it is actually trained. So, we, as as far as the in the core algorithm is done, you train the uh, uh, the AI uh, device. So we are getting a um, the samples of each state, you know, the license plates, so we can train them. Uh, so we will be ready to, but you know, the US is a very unique market. We got at least, or minimum, uh, actually possibly more, 50 different plates. So, and each state has an older type of a license plate, newer type of license plates, something in between. And also we have a federal, you know, license plate. One, what says, you know, one that says uh, U.S. government and things like that. We also have a vehicles coming in from Canada, so we have to train all those license plates. So we are working on that right now, but it will be ready soon. Um, this is another example, a uh, multiple channel AI working. Um, so something like channel one, you can utilize it as an LPR if it works. And uh, channel two is actually a tunnel and it's working right now with the four or uh, traffic flow scenarios. And if you look at a uh, camera number 12, this is actually a PTZ. So this is what we said before, um, AI works without any kind of environmental outside effects. Um, so the weather or movement or any sort of, you know, environmental, uh, environmental situations does not affect our AI performance. And if you look at something like camera number, yeah, is it 13? I cannot count. Uh, 13, also very, very wide field of view. All right, and the 14, all right. I'm gonna play a video here. Um, this looks pretty simple, the uh, channel number one. Uh, everybody knows the engagement rule, uh, and or, right? But it only works one end or one or, right? But um, this scenario, is to engage and activate which rules for certain situations. Um, however, most common thing is you only get one of one, uh, one of end or one of or, or us, our system is strong enough to uh, combine and or at the same time. So um, if you provide a another a video scenario, let's say if you're using two cameras with one video feed, you can do and or at the same time. So you get the uh, best of uh, both worlds, basically. So uh, let's say, you know, 
the intrusion zone one has n situation n rules built in you can react according to that and let's say zone two has a or situation you can also act real, uh, uh, according to that too uh, number two is a gender a uh, this is a, a a bathroom really um um, this is a sub, uh, kind of sensitive subject, like I said before, and uh, I think this was in Korea how it was done. But in Korea, a, um, this was to install to prevent sexual harassment, you know, the wrong gender in a wrong bathroom type of thing. So, you know, uh, this is also an example to show how our gender detection works well. And number three, for example, is another LPR scene. Um, our LPR works pretty good in the nighttime. And what's best about this thing is, this is actually filmed using regular cameras. Uh, this is not a LPR specific camera. This is actually a um, you know a Sony based camera. The only thing they did was uh, adjusting the shutter speed. So at nighttime, the vehicle is approaching to the uh, the box. And it'll read it'll read the um, license plate like that. And number four is a high-rise condo unit in Korea. Also, and you know it's common in Korea that we have a lot of high-rise buildings, and they are mostly gated community too. And the air air is detecting white and black list basically, and, and taking place along with that. So if a tenant uh, vehicle approaches and passes in line, it'll attack the, um, the the plate in the vehicle. If it's a non-tenant, it'll also alert as well. So um, it, back in the days, like LPR situation, most of the times if you look at, let's say JFK airport, you have two cameras, one PTZ, Palco PTZ, and one LPR cameras. So LPR only does LPR. You know, it's looking at the right, you know, uh, uh, angle, right direction all the time. And PTG does all the monitoring uh, about using our, you know, AI solutions. You can just use one camera for both purposes. All right, um, the COVID special, the... Uh, the image is what we have done in UK market. A, there's we have that too, not so common in the states, but there's a, a supermarket chain in Aldi, in, in UK, A R D I, and they had two things in mind. Uh, one with the social distancing, with a limiting number of people in the store at the same time, and one with the mask mask detection. And it actually turns out to be a quite su uh, successful uh, story. And our uh, this project was actually broadcasted in BBC News. Uh, we have a clip for that that we can share later on. But anyways, uh, with an LD supermarket, they did the mass detection. And it also tells you how many people are inside a store and how many people you know, went in and came out. So it combined those data at the same time, and it, it worked pretty well. Look, you want to add more for the LD supermarket? or? Uh, no, I'm good. Thanks. Okay. All right. For the, the record, all these are a German supermarket. Oh, oh, oh is oh, it German? Oh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're like the biggest uh, supermarket chain in, in Germany and in Europe, I think. Oops. They're also uh -huh. just entered the U.S. market, and they're also doing quite a bit of business here. Right, 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 right. Uh, we, recently, well, we see more Aldi these days. Uh, I didn't see many before, but you see more often now. But, yep. This was a huge project, and it was also on BBC as well. So we had a quite a successful story with this project. All right, um, channel one camera, the social distance with so the fisheye. Uh, like I said before, it looks easy, but it's not. Um, with that round image of a fisheye, it's not that easy to you know, accurately measure distance. But you know, our engineers, you know, smart guys, did pretty well, and you can actually did uh, you can actually measure distance uh, quite accurately too. And also, a uh, like I said, active privacy masking. Um, if you look at the image number two, it is a uh, entrance or an exit, and people are basically pri privacy masked. And 
you cannot see their faces. You don't know who they are, and but you can still see. You can still have the you know the retail solution ready, like you know people counting also. Yep. Um, I think we'll be seeing more of this in the U.S. market too. You know, active privacy. When you get a, a ticket, uh, just passing the toll booth, you get a ticket, right? And your the vehicle driver is blocked, but you only see the license plate, like one of those uh, privacy thing. And the number three is mask detection. Uh, this is active mask detection. Oops, um, play that again. Now, uh, it'll detect with or without mask scenarios and it alerts the you know, necessary people to take action. Um, we have facial recognition as well. So if it's combined with the face recognition feature, uh, you can detect more accurately and who is with or without the mask. Um, this is what Tony asked before, if you can combine the roles. Yes, uh, we just did for the heck of it. Uh, people may ask how many rules theoretically can we implement in one channel? Uh, the theoretic number is 80 rules at the same time. Um, we are gonna run out of space, of course, but we can combine many rules as possible. So, I mean, this is, you know, the, the footage is just an example of multiple rules and um, you can do LPRs and illegal parking uh, enforcement or line crossings or intrusions, things like that. Uh, this is pretty good for like, like traffic monitoring or let's say, in, you know, also retail stores too. And being able to combine multiple AI rules uh, is one of the most strong points when it comes to securing that, uh, how, you know, how, how powerful and how uh, 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 good our AI is. Because each AI depends on how you set your rule, how you set the detection area. They could miss something, but when you combine first rule and second rule and third rule and fourth rule if needed or additional rules uh, you're actually increasing the accuracy of the detection by far so you can actually uh, act, uh, filter the first person through the first rule and if you see possible errors and you can actually filter uh, the same objects using second rule and third rule and so on and so forth. So that's how you can increase the accuracy of the uh, uh, the detection. And our AI engine is powerful enough uh, to give you multiple layers of AI rules. Right. Not only multiple layers in one channel, but you can duplicate the same thing over and over as far you know as long as the performance allows. So you can have a multiple channel of this. So imagine, let's say, a, a intersection doing this. Multiple intersections can be covered, or train stations can be covered. So we had a project in a Belgium. Was it Belgium? Look, the railroad, loyal Belgium railroad or something. Yes. Uh -huh. All right. We have a uh, there's a main station in Belgium. They wanted to do fishy and you know multiple rules combined with a Genetech actually, and it. Worked pretty well. Uh, we actually submitted for piloting programs, and uh, they are pretty happy with this. So I think most likely it'll happen. Uh, we're gonna get the project. So when that's done, we'll share more about this too. But anyways, yes, like you know, looks at you can combine multiple rules to filter errors and you know uh, whatnot. So yep, this is good to go. Um, this is basically you can control how you can you know a, a set up multiple roles and you know what let's just skip this this is not that important i'm sorry <laughs> you can see right. it when you get when you get this the software right yeah yeah i mean it's kind of hard to say in a slideshow so yeah basically your bit the key point is you guys have a, a um it's a pretty easy to set, to set up the settings for it right 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 um um, is it browser based or is it uh, is it is it thick client based? It's a uh, browser based. Browser and based. It's picky. I, I'm kidding. I'm not. It, it's not picky at all. All right. <laughs> it doesn't. So you, can use... do it, you can do it on any OS though because it's browser based, right? Right. But let me tell you this: for the first time, from Asian company, it does not like IE. It likes Chrome. 
That's good. That's, That's good. good. Yeah, most, most yes. Asian companies love the IE, <laughs> even though it's been the uh, you know in right, the life right. of like years. <laughs> uh, I, I understand IE is easy to work with the plugins and all those ActiveX and all that crap, but this is opposite. It doesn't like IE. Uh, it lows. Well, buggy. I, I think the reason that that IE is was so sticky uh, for a lot of uh, Asian companies who are, especially if they're in an OEM business, is that exactly. they started off way earlier, like you guys did, right? In 1998, yep. DVR boards, and you're making DVRs. Well, back in the day, I mean, IE was the browser, right? It yep. was the that browser. was the only thing. So yes. if you went down that path, then and, and you've been around a while, then it's difficult to move, right? right. To something new. Um, yep. So good to hear that you guys have moved over to the Chrome world. Yep. Finally, we made a change, and the uh, our web-based GUI is you know HTML5 based, so it's pretty easy to work with with not only Chrome but you know Safari and other uh, popular non-IE uh, browsers too. Right. Um, this slide is about how a easy integration could be done with the REST uh, API, and we have. Wait, is it playing? All right. If you look at, this is our setup menu, basically. And directly accessing the setup menu, you can download the API. So, you know, by downloading the API, it can be integrated with the other system. Um, this is where you can download the API. For example, it can be integrated with other access controls and video audio devices and NVRs and VMSs. And Another note to make is that the um, the video source can be anything from IP cameras or other NVRs or VMS or legacy DVRs even. You know, if the DVR supports RTSP streams, it can be used with our uh, AI box. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the video source is basically limitless. Uh, you can take USB webcam, a video streaming off your computer, implement to our AI box, it'll start doing the AI thing. So it's pretty easy, but you know this REST API, you know, integration makes things much even easier and much more flexible. So yep, you've got remote is... assistance built in too. I'm Looks sorry. Like... Uh, Watching the video here. Yes, this is our AI box. When you first get it, it's very hard to configure, right? Once you know how it works, it's not that hard, right? But for the uh, first time. If the user wants us to do a certain configurations or do a training, so this works basically almost like a uh, a team viewer or more accurately viewer BNC type of protocol. Yep. So this is a secure. You know, you have you know the user must allow us to do the port forwarding and everything, and it'll give us you know the user has to give us the access code. But this is an optional. You can either turn it off or turn it you know uh, turn it uh, turn it on. You know if want the the user wants us to do let's say nx power products along with our ai box you know but they want to configure let's say a thousand different rules we can help you can certainly help so there's a uh, real vh type of protocol built in and it works almost identical as a pc environment so but the cool thing is whenever we configure the device user can see it from the other end so it doesn't lock out the original user. So what our technicians and the user shares the same screen and they see everything at the same time together. So there's no you know questions you know uh, rise after that. You know if there's any security issues or if there's any kind of you know like hacking issues or anything like that. So yep, we make everything pretty clear and we do our, our security mode a customer service too. All right, so um, Tony asked before about the cameras. The answer is yes. Uh, we have a four different tiers of cameras, right? The first tier, we call it, the, the series is called the Sense. Um, it does everything all other Asian cameras do these days. It detects a human only, just because it is lower end cameras with the lower SOC built in. So it's, the, it's nothing surprising. But when you go to Ultra, uh, this is where the game change happens. Um, I wouldn't say 100% identical performance as AI box, but it's pretty similar to that, right? So it, it does object detector, trackers, and rule engines, right? 
and compared to we have a pro series cameras, it's double the performance. So let's say AI box is about 100% of the performance, ultra is about 70%, right? And pro is about 35%. So uh, the ultra does double the performance of a pro, and we have another series called the Claire. It does uh, human detection. Human detection also means object detection too. You know, you're gonna implement that feature too. So it's gonna detect cars and dogs and animals and you know the bike, bike, bicycles, those simple things, plus the tracking. So yep, uh, we have number of cameras and the lineups. So not everybody wants, let's say, ultra like detector, tracker, you know, rule engines and double the performance, yet three times the cost of cameras everywhere. So if they want to have a 16 channel or 32 channel, you know, whatever the scenario may be, you can pretty much mix and match. So anywhere that's not so important, you can just use lower, you know, level cameras anywhere that's really important with the um, the rules and the uh, the engines is really important you can use a higher and ultra cameras too all right um now the highlight begins uh we talked about our ai products but how well does it work with a um nx or nx power products right um it works pretty well we have something called security net plugin so you can detect and you can also search uh, using a search menu on an NX products too. And everything that's detected by our AI products, including AI box and cameras, it will be also tag, tagged as well. All right. Um, now this page shows a high level integration between NX and NX products and the AI box. And you inst um, NX provides something called the security net plugin. So you install that plugin to our server uh, with your you know, NX or NX based server. And um, basically you can use, start using our AI box or AI cameras. Um, so for example, door came with a thermal sensor and AI box with a facial recognition or mask detection. And the, you know, the, the software detects a, a closed relay and open doors too. So you have to meet the condition. For example, you know, there's a thermal sensor, uh, AI box detects a uh, person with the facial recognition has to pass, and person has to wear a, a mask, then the software relays uh, to open the door. Uh, you can create scenarios like that. Um, the AI box also uses a computer vision, basically uh, 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 neural network vision to you know, classify objects and apply them to user defined rules and you know, uh, crossings and intrusions and you know, counting and all that stuff. And sends the metadata to a uh, NX server, um, it also detects the events and you can also search that and tag it and you can also use a bookmark too. Yeah, so there's your standard metadata SDK uh, level integration, guys. So there's a plugin. You can get it from the NX integrations ecosystem on NX Cloud. Um, and there's a user manual and everything. Basically, install the plugin on one of their servers in the system that you're going to be, uh, or all the servers, depending on which cameras you're going to be uh, sending to uh, SecureNet. Um, and then once you've done that, just like with every single one of our metadata SDK uh, integrations with plugins, you're going to be able to see the uh, object data come into to NX or powered by NX, NX Witness or another powered by NX product. Um, and then you're gonna um, be able to search video based off of those different uh, things and also generate rules using the rules engine to automate uh, specific reactions to like the information that SecureNet's given you. So um, one question though, um, this integration mm -hmm. is for both cameras and the AI box and the server side uh, analytics? Yep, like all correct. Yep. Right. AI so like, box was done first, and the um the camera is done as well. Right. So like all of these, uh, all these. I'm guessing you guys have a common API for all the uh, different solutions, right? So that yep. way the integration right. is common as well. Right. So that's really nice if you're doing integration, guys, and you're doing some software development. That common API from SecureNet allows you to basically interact with their different devices uh, in in a common way. Um, and if you want to write some uh, some form of middleware to connect to some other third party systems, you can. 
Um, you can also just use uh, NX Witness API um, to do the same thing. Um, it really depends on, on the level of integration you're going for. So uh, as you can see, it's, uh, it's, it's your standard integration uh, with all these different options. You got a lot of uh, different uh, ways to approach different problems that your customers are coming to you with. Sorry, go ahead, Chris. All right. Uh, I'm gonna skip this project uh, slide. All right, this is an example slide of how well it works with the NX. So where is this video? This is a Korea. Uh, uh, yeah. It looks like Korea. Right, it looks, you know, small, narrow rows, you know, a lot of cars. Yeah. Yeah, so the, uh, depending on the boxes, right? Uh, like. This is again a multiple rules. Uh, it also it, it, it alerts car detections. You know, I'm sure you guys are familiar with, with it, this um, interface. Yeah, with the rules engine. So you got to select yeah, the alert and mm -hmm. then define it. So when the uh, when you guys are detecting the different objects, I'm guessing you're sending through uh, attributes as well. Right. Um, yeah. There you go. You can see the different yeah, types. The of... Event types. You can do all these things. You can yeah. do lock, yeah, line crossing. Well, I mean. For cars specifically, you guys do make model uh, color. Um, yes and no. A, um, yes. I think it's in the work. Uh, I don't think it's done yet, but you can do that too, right? Uh, and as far as the AI is, you know, uh, the the core is done. You know, everything else is pretty easy. So it's a matter of you know they're gonna train different models and makes you know. So we just get did to get the sample data, but yeah, I think it's in the works. For people, same thing. Does it do uh, additional attributes, or is it just uh, just person? Uh, what do you mean by that? So the, the metadata the, attributes yeah. of an individual, like you had gender up there before. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the AI analytics that I've I've, I've played with have like uh, they'll do like what kind of shirt, what color shirt you're wearing, uh, what kind of what color pants you're wearing. Oh, I see. You um, know, that, yes. Um, it's not built in yet, but we we can do that too. We can definitely do that too. So, so, and uh, it's coming yeah, up. Like hats and sunglasses and eyes and you know, mask and no mask, all that stuff. So this is pretty simple, you know, how it's configured with an NX interface. Yeah, so you can go in and you can configure your different uh, zones right. for your rules. So there's a region of interest configuration inside of NX Witness or another powered by NX product. Mm -hmm. um, then set up your rule. Then you can. Uh, they, what they did here was they had a it looks like a, a video overlay coming on top sure. of it. Right, right, and then gotcha. you can see underneath the the search on the objects tab on the right. Um, exactly, all well, the blue colors, the the, uh, the uh, blue color and the red boxes. Yes, we can do that. Yeah, too. so you right. can go into type, and you can see all the types of different types of uh, objects that it's connecting to you right now. Sure. And just to add about the uh, what's available and what's not available, uh, the way you, we promote the product, uh, the whole solution is we do have basic layer of what's already available, actually pre-built pre libraries uh, for our AI detection. And we also have custom uh, library where uh, we had some semiconductor company uh, came to us and they wanted to custom uh, the AI detection based on their needs. Yeah. So yeah, we typically have uh, the basic layer plus the customization layer too. So if there's a large enough project, um, exactly. then you guys can train the neural network to do something new. Right. Right. I mean, you know, like you know, training, AI training takes time and effort. Yeah. Um, it's, once it's done, it's pretty cool. But until that point, it's pretty much about manual labor, right? So it's depending on how it makes sense in terms of the project size and in you know, a customer needs. But everything is possible, basically. So, you know, church and naked or non-naked is even possible. <laughs> Everything um, is possible. Yes. There's a couple questions that came in that are, I think are good yes, ones. Um, so what is the maximum number of rules per camera? Is there one? Um, AI camera? I guess. Maybe. You know what? <laughs> the I'm general not sure question. yet. Uh, that's a good question. Hey, um, I'll be honest with you. I don't know. But they say 70%. So maximum rules, I assume, is about 30 to 40 rules. But I need to make sure. Um, okay. Uh, just, uh, just to add to Chris's answer, 
uh, depends on level of camera you get. I mean, Chris showed you about four or five different levels of camera. And each camera or AI box basically comes with coins. So, so late uh, for the uh, for the basic sense camera level, you get three thousand coins. It depends on how which function you want to use. As an example, simple person detection from fifty feet will cost you five hundred coins. But uh, uh, detecting a person from 300 feet or detecting a car from a couple thousand feet will cost you 1,500 uh, coins. So depends on what mix of functions you use, uh, your usage for the coin can be different. So uh -huh. depends on which level of camera you go, you get different uh, pool of coins and depends on what kind of features you mix it with. Uh, that's how that's how you can determine how many features you can combine them together. And as an example, AI box comes with the most biggest pocket. So um, another analogy I can do is a let's say computer RAM. You have a 16 gig in your Windows system, and the question goes: How many programs can you run simultaneously? Right? Good question. Well, nobody can answer because. It's all depending on which apps you're utilizing, how much of a RAM per what session. So same thing, like looks at, it's basically shared a resources. So more of, you know, complex, like a uh, uh, AI calculation will cost you more coins. Um, so depending on the roles, let's say it's really simple line crossing, you can probably draw like thousand lines and should be fine. But if you're yeah, doing, well, yeah multi level of a recognizer and detector at the same time, you probably get a few. Yeah, it also depends um, on the number of objects, the object density, right? Exactly. And then the size of the video stream you're analyzing and a bunch of other stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So it's never it's never a simple question. It's like asking someone question. like it's like asking someone who's who can juggle a little bit, well how many balls can you juggle? It's like ah, I don't like ah, not like I, eventually I'm gonna fail here, right? Um, right, right, maybe, right. I do, maybe I can do four or five, but then when I get up to six, it starts to get hard, right? Yep. Um, so it's not a, a an exact science, and I think it's a lot of it's gonna be environmental based, even with deep learning stuff, right? Because everybody needs to remember that deep learning is just mimicking what humans do, right? Sure. And, and humans have a a limit <laughs> as well, right, right? right? So right. Yeah. So if you push the limit, um you know you probably get a few but it's all depending on the scenarios but um camera i just want looking at one side of view so i i think we have enough resources to cover those uh, those kind of scenarios right? okay so there's right. another question um was uh do you guys do appearance based search like so like in, if something in the like something happened and then i and i and i want to look for like a either a person or an object Yes. In historical footage. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we can do that too. Um, I heard that's in the works too. Uh, it's not done yet, but it will be done. Uh, yes. But that's actually very often asked a uh, feature. Um, so if they want to look for, let's say, a male with black hat and, you know, a, uh, a, a like blue backpack, you know, search that person. Yes. So uh, we've been asked a lot. And I think they're going to be doing that soon. But I need to find out. Right. Um, by the way, US is, we don't have R&D here. Everything is done in Hakuna in Korea. So we are mostly a sales office or operational office based on US side. So um, those kind of detailed technical questions, you know, we need to confirm with headquarters. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so sometimes, you know, there's time differences and everything. So we don't have the answers right away, but um, probably those features are in the works too. Cool. All right. Are there any more questions? We're getting towards the end here. Yep. I think, uh, how many slides you got left there, Chris? Uh, three more. Three more. Yes, sir. Yeah, we still, we still have uh, attendees. Let's go. All right. So, Mario asking, uh, waiting for the um, questions. This is the same footage at the night time, and it's working pretty well still so you can you know engage multiple roles and boxes and all that stuff with the next 
Is this uh, being done on an AI camera or an AI box? Do you know? AI box. AI this box. This is AI box, yes. I like the AI box. It makes things simple. Um, exactly. You know, one of the difficult things with selling analytics, as you guys know, and as most of you guys that, that are on the, the webinar know or listening to the webinar later know, um, one of the most difficult things to do is figure out what kind of hardware you need to run these neural networks. Mm -hmm. And the idea that you can buy this box and here you go, right? I can do four cameras and and and, and everything's pretty straightforward. Um, it makes uh, quoting a system a lot easier. It makes implementing a system a lot easier and maintaining a system as well. Because if you right. need to expand because your customer likes the capabilities they got, well, then you can just quote the number of AI boxes they need, right? Yep. Or uh, vice versa, like with the cameras, having the AI stuff in the camera makes it just a, re a real simple a simple process to actually quote and design a, a system as opposed to uh, server side. Uh, obviously, there are benefits to doing server side sometime, depending on what the uh, what the application is and what the customer is. Um, but just in general, um, this is uh, simplifying the process a lot. So. Right. So, so I guess compared to the server market, is you know actually separate market segment. Um, there are like Tony said, uh, needs for a uh, server market. But they are also a ton of money too. They cost multiple more money than the AI box costs. So depending on the situation, sometimes people want, you know, they don't want to spend that much money having, you know, to get decent performance. So that's when the AI box makes sense. And also easy integration, you know, easy deployment and almost maintenance fee. So the only thing you gotta do is provide the power and sometimes do a formula upgrade. And this is another slide for a um, NX, how it works with NX and NX power products. If you look at here, this actually in Korean, but it's giving you a uh, uh, detected object and then it's descriptions basically. It, Attributes. Yeah. yeah, it tells yeah, you where it was detected. It's basically tagging, so you can search yeah. it later, right? Yeah, and in in the in a, in the later release this year, um, mm -hmm. we're gonna have the ability then to to search by those types of uh, little tags sure. and everything like that. So right. integration that you guys have done is mm -hmm. gonna get updated to include uh, much faster search capabilities as well. Um, the ability to search by different attributes and colors and, and things that are unique to the, the objects that are being detected. Mm -hmm. Yep, so this is another example. And another example is this, share the video. This is a simple rule. You can probably do it with, you know, lower end cameras too. It, it actually, a uh, you know, detector basically, the line crossing and intrusion. So anything within this red zone box, it will be detected and, this, and accounted to. This looks like Germany. I uh, somewhere of Europe, um, Germany or those kind my, of. My money's on Germany. Countries. Yeah. <laughs> How about Czech Republic? <laughs> possibly, possibly. Um, possibly right. possibly. Those, you know, like not so high rise buildings and big, open space in between those buildings and outdoor restaurants. Yeah, it looks like yeah. Czech Republic. Yeah. Or Hungary, somewhere there. Somewhere on not New Jersey. Central Europe. <laughs> yeah, somewhere on not New Jersey. That's what matters, right? So this is an example of, you know, how much of a simple implementation you can do you know, with those cameras and how complicated you can get with AI boxes too. Um, oops. So this shows, uh, I'm going to skip to, so this is basically showing you um, how it can be configured with the NX, with the vehicle detections and the car counting. Uh, I'm not sure where, but definitely not states, uh, probably, I don't know, Middle East somewhere. So, oh, it's in English, so it must be English language country somewhere. But anyways, 
Uh, that's a good question. It's it's kind right. of a fun game to guess where this stuff is. India, maybe. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Let's try to get that for your side. You see, could be Spain. I don't know. Yeah. Anybody? Any one of those palm guess? trees and European-looking buildings, definitely not staged. And longer license plate tells me it's a Europe somewhere. Yes. So, anyways, yes, you can do a uh, car countings like that. And so it seems like you guys are just taking a pr real broad uh, stroke approach to the different types of analytics to sure. allow people to kind of customize right. um, the application itself to give the customers their end result. Right. right. Oh, uh, actually, I'm glad they noticed that. Yeah, we, we tried hard. <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't know where we got that video from, it's probably off YouTube. Silvio, Silvia yeah. said it looks like uh, maybe Cart Cartagena in Spain. Right, um, right. Web webcam <laughs> skyline webcam. I don't know where, but we got <laughs> record off that. So you know, we didn't film this, but you throw any video, you're still doing you know AI analysis. So this is our strong point. But anyway, the point is, it works beautifully with the uh, NX and NX Power products, and it works pretty well. All right. So this is pretty interesting uh, uh, footage actually let me see this uh, is it playing um yes it's also tagging the person on the left and uh, with the conjunction of face recognition or mask detections and gender detections or black and white person detection you know probably let's say this is a uh, escalator coming up from subway to a mall entrance or a casino then you can do uh, a uh, a black and white list of a band people right so it also can do a mask detection it tells you if the person is wearing a mask or not or wearing a sunglasses or things like that so you have a pretty flexible scenario you can probably create with this so uh, probably somewhere like in Vegas, you know, the casino entrances, this probably works well. Or well, there's also a gym, gym memberships, right? Uh, anytime you oh, have like a VIP list, VIP customers, or like mm -hmm. you said, block listed or white listed customers, um, like anytime you, you, you need to do uh, some form of verif verification, you can right. even... Um, I mean, passport control, <laughs> you, can, you can do it, yeah, right? Yeah, something like that. Actually, that reminds me, hey, we had a project in Korea, a pilot project in Korea. It's a car mechanic shop. So whenever a vehicle drives in, it takes a license plate and gives the data to the, you know, the service uh, agent. If the car was ever been to the shop, if they did, what kind of service they have done, let's say if they are, you know, you can uh, you can guess if they are due uh, oil change or tire rotation, things like that. So it also is good for a customer, a, uh, a database too. Yep. Pretty similar to that. Okay. And when it comes to uh, facial detection, um, our deep learning based uh, AI can detect a person's face. Once a person is registered to the database, it can still detect with uh, uh, face coverings, like with the sunglasses on or hat on, it will still detect the same person. So that was our last slide. And if you have any questions, you know, let Tony know or let me know. It shows my email yeah. address. Mm -hmm. About 10 minutes over. So Chris, you guys are in uh, Jersey. So yes, North sir. America. Um, do you guys do the, just the North American market for business development or do you also do Europe? Um, which, which, which areas do you cover? All right, only the U.S. market, Canada, U.S., you know, we don't have a presence in Latin America, but we would love to, but we're not ready yet, so we don't have any presence there yet, but Canada and U.S. is covered from New Jersey. And so for European, anybody, is, mm -hmm. oh, go ahead. The European market is covered by our Belgium office. We have an office in Belgium, so, yep, uh, that well, office anybody, covers. Anybody mm -hmm. interested, they can email you, and you can put them in touch with the right people, depending Absolutely. on no matter which mm -hmm. region they're in. Is that right? right? Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool, man. Thank you guys so much for going over uh, the SecureNet product. Um, sure. We should have one more time. We are already 10 minutes past. Yeah, we're already 10 minutes past. But, um, you know, 
as always, this webinar will be up on uh, mind.nevergraphics.com and on our YouTube channel uh, in okay. the next uh, 48, 72 hours, usually. Um, okay, and good. the presentation materials will also be there um, if you, if you want to review this uh, in your own time. Um, and if you have any questions, there's Chris's email. Um, feel free to reach out to SecureNet. Um, they've, got, they, they've got a lot of experience, obviously, in this industry in IP video and digital video, I guess you could say, because it started off with DVRs, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so everything, and they got a lot of expertise in terms of the embedded side of things and also the camera side of things. So, you know, hit these guys up if you've got projects that, that need some AI and, and let them see what they can do in terms of a solution for you. Um, so, Chris, th thank you guys. And Luke, right. thank you guys for uh, coming on and give us an overview. Okay. Well, thank you, Tony. Thank and thanks, you. everyone, for joining us today. Uh, we'll no have problem. a wonderful day. Look forward to seeing uh, the, the newer stuff as you guys continue to develop and, and, and as we continue to develop out our metadata uh, capabilities. Uh, you All should, right. Absolutely. You guys out there should be seeing some cool stuff come out. So thank you, everyone, for your time. Um, thank you again, Chris and Luke. Um, we'll see you next time. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. Take care. Goodbye, everyone.